the numbers you're looking for really are growth numbers, but especially abroad. That's a big deal, and it's one that investors have been watching really closely. It's a huge deal because it's the only place they really can grow. At this point, they're about saturated in the United States, and so all growth opportunities are going to come from abroad. Remember, they're at about 150 million subscribers now. They think to one day get to a point where they can cancel out that debt, they need to get to 300 million. So they're about halfway there. And again, with high expectations coming into this, I mean, it's a pretty high, high bar to jump. Street's not too much ahead of where the company actually guided and told people to look. What's going to make the difference in the metric? I mean, I think the key thing here is, one, can you get to that metric, that point where you're getting to $300 million, if you're going to have to start getting a little bit more conservative on content spend? We know they're spending about $15 billion a year, but we've heard reports out last week from the information that Ted Sarandos, their COO, says, we might, not need, we might need to be a little bit more conservative now with how we're spending. So let's take a look here at what those operating margins are, how much they're going to be able to profit. And then if they can get those numbers at a healthy place, I'd expect earnings with good subscriber growth to be positive today. Hey, Julia, if they're getting to a point where they need to be a little more conservative in, in terms of their spending, at the same time, you're also seeing big players, not the least of which being Disney jumping into this. There's going to be so many new offerings that are out there a year from now. What, what's the landscape going to look like at that point? Well, Becky, I don't know if they will be more conservative with their spending or if they feel like they can afford to because they are losing so much of this licensed content to the likes of Disney, HBO Max, as well as NBC Universal. Now, all three of those companies are going to be launching their own services starting with Disney in the fall. And so the issue is that they have to invest more in originals as they lose some of the licensed content. And they're also going to be competing, which means not just more exclusive original content to compete with these other players, but also higher investment in marketing. So I think this landscape is incredibly crowded. Netflix has the advantage of already being in about 150 million homes and already having that subscriber base. But the question is how much people feel like what they could get elsewhere would be worth sort of worth either dropping Netflix or whether they could just add perhaps one or two other services. So I do think there will be a limit to how many services people subscribe to. And Netflix is going in with those people already locked in. The question is how much that could really impact their growth going forward.